Okay. Uh, all right, so if my um, uh, previous note on flexible commitments was sort of a, you know, a direction not fleshed out, this one is even more uh, vague. Um, this, this is, I, I, I have fairly concrete ideas about how to do the previous thing but didn't express them all in detail. Um, this one, there are a lot of gaps in exactly how to achieve this. So this is a direction with much more flexibility um, and m many more unanswered questions. Um, but it's also uh, looking at a much harder problem. Um, so again, this is this is a direction. This is me pointing, um, not at a place, but it, like in a direction in which we might uh, drive some development. Um, it, it's one of it, it needs to um, it needs to intertwine with other directions that are see seeking other goals as well. Um, so um, yeah, I guess take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this, this is very much the beginning of a discussion, uh, far from far from the end. So. All right, scaling Filecoin. So uh, Filecoin does a certain amount of stuff right now. It you know, has a certain amount of sectors, a certain amount of data, a certain amount of transaction you know, rate of putting data into and out of sectors, inspecting them, doing all the other things about that. Um, um, Filecoin has a limits on how much of that it can do. The network has limits on how much of that it can do. Um, a couple of years ago, we thought we were going to run into one of these limits when the uh, hyperdrive, so that the proof aggregation uh, changes were made. Were made. Um, which in theory allowed, um, it sort of changed the, it pre previously to hyperdrive, the, the bottleneck on onboarding more sectors was the computational cost of verifying the proofs, right? There was a certain chain, you know, processing bandwidth that we can get all the validating nodes to do, and that was the bottleneck on onboarding storage. Um, uh, proof aggregation changed, removed that bottleneck so that now we could onboard, I can't remember what the sort of projections were, but you know, ex many exabytes in short periods of time. Um, so it's no longer a computational bottleneck. Uh, instead, the bottleneck became state. Uh, every sector requires a certain amount of um, uh, <coughs> state to be held by all validating nodes. Um, I'm not actually on top of my head sure uh, how large it is, hundreds, hundreds of bytes, maybe thousands. Um, um, and the bottleneck was instead going to be, if, if people actually did onboard, you know, use the chain bandwidth to onboard sectors, the state size would blow out to terabytes um, just to, to um, keep track of that. Um, and then the cost of accessing that state, you know, the, the, the bandwidth of sort of accessing that state was also a limiting factor. Um, <clears throat> so there are, there are two, two bottlenecks, two, two, two big main bottlenecks on, on scaling Filecoin, getting Filecoin to do more of what it does better and, and faster and cheaper. And so the, the chain bandwidth, which is the computation and sort of the IO, the amount, you know, the messages that go into the network um, and the state size. Uh, both of these limit how much Filecoin we can have. Okay, um, so I'm going to run through a couple of ideas for uh, addressing this problem, making Filecoin scale further, so we can do do more data, more sectors, more transactions. Um, uh, I'm going to run through a couple of different ideas. The first ones, all of which you know, are just setups for the, the last one. Um, and so back a couple of years ago, after after Hyperdrive, um, we saw this problem coming, and uh, a few of us spent some time trying to figure out what we could do now to resolve it. Um, in the end, we put this work aside because growth did increase, but not as much. It, it stopped. It, it got off its exponential. It had been on an exponential before. The exponential was what was scary. Um, it got off its exponential, and as soon as it dropped back to, to linear, we're like, oh, okay, we can we can keep doing this for years. Um, uh, <clears throat> okay, but but so so idea number one that that we did uh, develop in moderate detail at that point um, is to summarize the state. So today, every sector requires a certain amount of uh, chain state. It's called the sector on chain info hundreds, maybe thousands of bytes. Um, and uh, so you know, every news, and you know, we, we're constrained by proof technology to 32 or 64 gigabyte sectors. Um, so that was sort of a fixed, you know, lin this linear relationship between number of sectors and size of the state. Uh, this proposal was to change that linear relationship so we get a sublinear relationship between number of sectors and size of the state. Uh, so we can have more sectors for cheaper. The general thrust of the idea was to group together a bunch of sectors that were similar and represent them with a constant size summary. And so you put these sectors, what we, call it a, we call it a super sector. So you make a super sector out of 16 sectors and this super sector has a pledge and this super sector has an expiration epoch at which all the sectors will expire and all of the properties that make each sector different, we summarize them and give them one value for the whole set of sectors. Um, and then we can, this can be you know, approximately a you know, logarithmic cost. If we keep doubling the size of the aggregate, we can represent, um, you know, 
uh, an arbitrary number of sectors in a, in a constant size state. Now, it's not perfect. There are hacks in there. Deals in sector state were a big problem with that. Faults are a problem because faults are a thing that happens to individual sectors, not to like huge groups of thousands of sectors. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it's a direction, right? We, we can summarize the state on, on chain, get represent more sectors with a fixed amount of uh, state. Um, so had problems, but um, it was an idea. So that idea is still sitting there. I don't think we're ever going to follow through on that idea because I think we have better ideas. Um, one of the reasons for following this idea was this was a thing that we essentially know how to do. There's some design decisions to make, but there's no. It's not a research problem. It's just an engineering problem. Uh, and, and our time frame at the, at the point was like, we might need to solve this problem in six to 12 months. Um, another idea, which was also present at the time, but is much more of a research problem, and we didn't know how to do, and so we didn't pursue as much because it wasn't going to solve our problem in time, um, is to take all of this sector information, this, this per sector state, and move it out of the chain state. Make it state that not every validating node on the network needs to maintain, but make it state that only the, the individual storage provider who has committed those sectors needs to maintain. Uh, and instead, have them communicate a summary of their entire state, um, their entire set of sectors um, into, the, into the chain, uh, and to do so with a verifiable computation. So um, you know, essentially a snark. Um, <clears throat> back when we were talking about this, I think the, the, you know, the term roll-up certainly existed, but wasn't in, in sort of the, you know, there's been a huge explosion in other ecosystems in roll-up technology, um, zero knowledge, you know, s s verifiable roll-ups and optimistic roll-ups. Um, what we're really talking about here is turning each miner into a roll-up. Um, um, <clears throat> in, in our case, we'd have to use a zero knowledge roll-up. Um, and uh, this, this means that the state on mainnet, instead of having state per sector, there'd be state per miner on mainnet. And the miner would perform a bunch of local computation um, under a verifiable scheme like a snark, and then merely prove that they did the correct computation to, to the main chain. And the main chain would merely, only have a summary per miner about what was going on. Um, I've hand waved over lots of details here. We didn't know how to do it at the time. We still don't exactly know how to do it, but we know that it's possible. And a lot of the technological building blocks have been developed in other ecosystems quite a lot um, since that time. So still a bit of a research problem, um, but it's, it's now sort of clearly theoretically, uh, clearly possible. We just don't know some the exact path to get there. Idea number three, which I'll just just briefly touch on, um, is, is naive sharding. So this you know, predates all, all the other things in, in, our, in other ecosystems. The idea is, you know, if uh, the size of the state that the network needs to maintain is too big, split it into chunks and have a chunk of the network maintain this, maintain one part of it, and a different chunk of the network maintain a different part. Uh, and then some new communication protocols to move state between between chunks. Um, <clears throat> this like is simple, but has a bunch of downsides. Um, one is it introduces all this communication between shards if you, if you want to have sort of one unified view of the network. Um, but the other is that it, it um, affects security of, of each shard. In, in a naive sharding scheme, um, you know, the sec security is now based on the, the membership, the storage power, the stake of the nodes in that shard. Um, and if you split the network in, into and pieces, then each one only has one on of the you know, network security um, of the network as a whole. Um, and we don't want to do that. We want we want the whole network to benefit from a shared security model, uh, where all of the storage power and pledge of all of the miners is contributing to the, the security for everyone. Um, <clears throat> and of course, in, in other ecosystems, rollups are also a, a solution to this. Okay, so idea number four. Here is here is um, my directional pitch for a thing that we could do that would would solve our problems, um, and that is to combine the idea of sharding with with rollups. There are, there are many different ways to describe this. Um, I'm not going to use. Wait. Well, anyway, um, <clears throat> so here the idea is um, re recall the private minor state idea where each miner is a rollup. We generalize that a little bit to be a collection of miners that all contribute to a rollup of, of their collective state. So this is the, this is the the power table of a subnetwork of Filecoin. We split the network into subnets, which is another word for shard. Um, and each of, those, each of these networks performs a verifiable computation in a snark or similar. Um, and that verifiable com computation ultimately is producing their part of the power table. And the verifiable part of that computation has to include all of the things that the Filecoin mainnet needs to trust in order for uh, security and reward distribution. So this means that this uh, this rollup state includes all of the per sector state, but we can split them into split it into you know subnets, so it's smaller. Uh, it needs to also include all of the verifications of all of the proofs, so all of the power up and all of the post uh, are rolled up into this uh, summary transaction, and then periodically these subnets 
uh, submit uh, a proof of their state transition and the, the resulting state to mainnet, which essentially puts, uh, you know, updates their part of the power table in mainnet. Uh, mainnet can then use this, uh, all, all these uh, parts of power tables together to distribute the block reward um, back down to the, the subnets. Um, I think in these schemes, uh, the, the subnet nodes would each, you know, so, so the question is like who's producing blocks on mainnet. I think it's still the same set of nodes. I think all of the nodes are still validators on mainnet, produce blocks on mainnet. Uh, that is what contributes to the mainnet's security. Um, but all of their state about how they, all of the state that adds up to their power, you know, their, their election ticket, their, their, their slice of the power table um, is stored in the subnet state instead, um, instead of being st stored directly in, uh, in the mainnet state. So this, this uh, um, simplifies mainnet in, in some sense in that it re reduces the amount of stuff that mainnet needs to keep track of. Um, mainnet really cares about the security of the storage. So all of everything that went into the, all the proofs, mainnet cares about because that's, that is what gives the network security. That is what lets the network mediate these commitments and, and make these proofs. Um, but there are a bunch of things the mainnet doesn't need to care about. It does not care about how nodes in a subnet arrive at consensus. Uh, we need to build the, this verifiable computation such that we don't care how the nodes inside that computation coordinate with each other to arrive at the uh, state transition they want to make, but we have to constrain that state transition to include everything that mainnet cares about for security and, and reward distribution. Um, uh, this is great because now these subnets can run different consensus protocols. They can run fast consensus protocols. They can be geographically local. Uh, they can have, you know, they, they need to use this, they need to use a PO rep that mainnet trusts. They need to use, need to use a post that mainnet trusts. They do not need to use a consensus mechanism that, that mainnet trusts. Um, <clears throat> this whole system can be hierarchical. So I've described sharding, but there's no reason that these shards can't further shard if we build the appropriate verifiable computation um, such that it can can form a hierarchy and, and shard further. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in, in a sort of degenerate case, you know, shard can also be a single miner. So we can also have, you know, the, the single miner private state that I described as idea number two. It's just a special case of this where there's one miner, obviously has no consensus algorithm, obviously doesn't need to coordinate with any other nodes. It's just some large operation, maybe inside one data center, that's, that's doing the work to maintain its own slice of the power table um, and does so in a, a verifiable way. Um, <clears throat> there are lots of questions to be answered here. There are lots of questions that I that, that we probably haven't even asked yet. Um, <clears throat> so again, let me paint this as a, as a, as a direction uh, in which we might take out take some research and development uh, towards scaling. Um, but it has the benefits of solving the size of the state problem by splitting it into parts. It maintains the shared security of the Filecoin mainnet um, for the for the things that for, for the you know, for the essential proofs that Filecoin cares about. It frees up the subnets to run whatever consensus algorithm what they want. They can run whatever VM they want. Um, there's all kinds of things that mainnet doesn't care about um, that these networks are then free to do to optimize their service to their clients or to their ability to be a platform for applications or their ability to, to you know, differentiate uh, amongst each other. Um, <clears throat> it does require a timestamping service. One of the things that I hand waved over is like, I oh, will just roll all of the verification of window post up into these, uh, this, this aggregate. Uh, window post is a critically time dependent operation. The, the thing that makes window post valid is that it happens every day. Um, it, mainnet, <coughs> it's, uh, you know, we, we would not have the security you want if a subnet you know, operated for a week, did all its, pretended that it did all its window posts at the end, you know, just computed all the window posts and submitted them at the end. That wouldn't give us the um, proof of space time that we need. Um, and so <clears throat> this uh, scheme does rely on some timestamping service that can give us the operation of uh, this, uh, the, you know, some, something happened before X date. Uh, DRAN gives us something happened after X date. You can't sample DRAN until after it produces the randomness. It does not give us the before relationship. We need a, some kind of timestamping commitment service that gives us the before relationship. Um, that again is a thing that mainnet will need to trust as part of its uh, verification. Um, I believe Nicola is going to talk in some, de some bit more detail about what such timestamping service would look like and how it could integrate with Filecoin because the same need arises from a different set of needs to do with uh, fast replication and fast block time. Uh, also ends up needing a timestamping service. Um, so there are some uh, synergies here. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to stop here. I think I'm nicely ahead of time. Uh, um, but this is also sort of a uh, – uh, Nicola is going to talk a little bit about um, different directions of optimizing Filecoin, um, which dovetail, dovetail here. Questions, discussion, open chat. How much time do we have?